Hello and welcome to the presentation about the heart and some common conditions that affect it. My name is Leslie Tyler and I am a cardiac nurse specialist. I am part of the team based at the Royal Barks Hospital. During this presentation we will review how the heart works, including the electrical system and structures. We will cover various topics including angina, heart attack, valve disease, common tests and treatments. Due to the amount of information in this presentation, we have divided it up into smaller presentations. This presentation is not all-encompassing, so please contact the team if you have further questions. The heart is a pump taking deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Oxygenated blood returns to the heart to be pumped around the body. The heart has its own rich blood supply called the coronary arteries, which deliver oxygenated blood to the heart muscle. As you can see from the diagram, the heart is made up of four chambers and four valves which allow the blood flow through the chambers. The right side of the heart pumps the blood to the lungs and the left side pumps the blood to the body via the aorta. The heart pumps 7,600 litres of blood per day. The heart can have issues with the heart muscle, valves, coronary arteries and electrical systems. These will be covered within the presentations. The electrical system of the heart, which includes the SA node, AV node and the right and left bundles. It is this system that activates the heart muscle to pump. This system can be damaged and this can result in rhythm disturbances. There are many causes and various treatment options for this. Some examples of rhythm disturbances are complete heart block, where the heart goes too slowly, which may require a pacemaker. Some fast heart rhythms may require medication or surgical intervention to slow the heart down. Some rhythms, for example atrial fibrillation, may require medication to help thin the blood. For example, warfarin or one of the newer medications like apixaban, which do not require regular blood tests. To diagnose some of these rhythm disturbances, an ECG will be performed but you may need further investigations to fully assess the rhythm disturbance, as some can be intermittent. Some people may wear a heart monitor for a period of time to capture the heart rhythm over a longer period of time. The commonest form of heart disease is coronary heart disease. Number one, angina, which is narrowed coronary arteries. Number two, heart attack, which is blocked coronary arteries. This can also be termed as acute coronary syndrome or myocardial infarction. Angina is a temporary imbalance between the blood supply and the demand within the coronary circulation. Every patient's symptoms will be slightly different. Location of the pain could be across the chest, central chest, arms, throat or neck, jaw, teeth, through to the back or the upper abdomen. The type of pain can be described as crushing, vice-like, stabbing, achy, heavy, burning or a discomfort. Precipitating factors can be things like exercise and physical activity, hot or cold weather, a heavy meal, stress, excitement or emotion. Angina attacks are usually short-lived and can be controlled by rest and or GTN spray or tablets. This shows a narrow coronary artery that is allowing only limited blood flow that cannot meet the demand required for the heart muscle at that time. Management of angina, controlling risk factors, for example, increasing exercise, healthy eating, maintaining a healthy weight, good blood pressure control, stopping smoking, good diabetic control, and looking ways at managing your stress. Taking the medications you are prescribed and seeking help if you are experiencing any side effects. Angioplasty, which may involve a stent or stents insertion. Coronary artery bypass graft. We will look at stent insertion and coronary artery bypass graft in more detail within the presentation. Heart attacks are an acute interruption of the blood supply within the coronary circulation to the heart muscle. The pain is usually sudden in onset, more severe and longer lasting than, in, than angina. Signs and symptoms can include nausea and vomiting, shortness of breath, pale complexion, sweating, cold and clammy, 
feeling lightheaded, dizzy or faint. You may feel restless or anxious. There may be a change in heart rate, blood pressure and temperature. It can cause raised glucose levels. The initial management should be calling 999. After a heart attack, you will require a recovery period and be prescribed medications. Lifestyle issues and cardiac rehabilitation will be discussed. A follow-up appointment will be arranged to discuss your progress. Some people require further investigations or interventions after their heart attack. This shows the artery can become blocked and cause death of heart muscle beyond the blockage. This can cause damage to heart muscle. Hence the reason for trying to ensure the patients are reviewed and treated as quickly as possible to try to prevent any heart muscle damage. There are a number of tests which can help diagnose heart problems and help with further treatments. These treatments can include angioplasty, which is a placement of a stent or stents, medical management, which is treatment with medications and lifestyle changes, or coronary artery bypass graft. The tests can include blood tests which look at markers in your blood which can give the team more information about your diagnosis. ECG which looks at the rate and rhythm of your heartbeat and can help with diagnosis of angina and heart attacks. Echo scan which looks at the heart muscle and valves. This can help assess any damage to the heart muscle or issues with the heart valves. Other tests can include a CT scan, cardiac MRI, exercise testing. Angiograms can help with diagnosis of heart disease and valve disease. An angiogram is a test where dye is inserted via a catheter, usually in the wrist, and it visualises the coronary arteries. Problems within that coronary circulation can be identified. Angiogram reports show diagrammatical pictures of your heart, and this shows how the coronary arteries fit into that picture. If you have a narrowed or blocked artery, this may require a stent. This picture shows the artery before and after the stent placement with a return of blood flow into the artery. The stent is made of a specialised metal. The stent is deployed into the artery by pass passing a guide wire with a deflated balloon into the artery. This balloon is then inflated and the stent expands within the narrowed artery. The balloon is deflated and this leaves the stent in place to keep the artery open. Medication is required after the stent is inserted. Follow-up appointments and cardiac rehab will be offered after angioplasty. Some people may not be suitable for angioplasty, so it may be, may be considered for surgical intervention. If you need bypass surgery, this will be discussed with yourself and your family with the consultant surgeon. Bypass surgery creates new routes around the blocked or narrow arteries. This allows increased blood flow to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle. The surgeon can use arteries from your chest wall and veins from your legs. The hospital you attend for your surgery will provide you with information about your recovery. After your surgery you require some time for recovery and this will vary from person to person. Medications will be reviewed and follow-up appointments and cardiac rehabilitation will be discussed. If there is a problem with your heart valve, this is predominantly an issue with the aortic or mitral valve. The diagram shows their position within the heart structure. You may have been told you have a heart murmur. The issues with the valves are usually if they have become floppy or stiff. Regurgitation, a floppy valve that does not close tightly and allows blood to leak backwards. Stenosis, a stiff valve, does not open wide enough and blood has to squeeze through. Some of the signs and symptoms can be dizziness, shortness of breath, fatigue, chest pain, palpitations and ankle swelling. There can be a reduction in the heart function and heart function is discussed in a different presentation. For issues with the aortic valve, treatment can include non-surgical intervention, medications, repair or replacement of the valve. The options would be discussed prior to any treatment. 
For issues with the mitral valve, treatments can include medication, repair or replacement, options will be discussed prior to any treatment. Follow-up appointments may be required depending on what treatment is required. Medications will be reviewed and cardiac rehabilitation will be discussed. We have looked at some of the common cardiac problems but there are other conditions causing people to present with cardiac sound in pain. Some examples of these are pericarditis, which is a condition causing inflammation of the pericardium, coronary artery spasm, pulmonary hypertension, intergestion or gastric problems, gallstones, chest injury, pulled muscles or joints in the chest area, respiratory problems, for example, chest infections, pulmonary emboli, which is a clot in the lung. Investigations will be undertaken to determine the cause of the pain and appropriate treatment started. This presentation, we have looked at the most common heart problems and some of their treatments. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you require further information. Information can also be found on the Trust website and the British Heart Foundation website. Thank you.